Coach Nate here and sometimes Shoe Tester Nate talking about the Ultra Temp 5 and the just released Ultra Experience Wild. I've been putting a lot of miles in both of these shoes as I get ready for the upcoming Gorge 50K out here in beautiful Oregon. And I have my opinions on both these shoes and I thought I would share them with you today because you may know the Temp 5 and be more familiar, especially if you're that ultra stalwart. But this is a new entry into the whole lineup. It's got a four millimeter drop. What? Ultra doing heel toe drop shoes? I thought that was a big no-no. Well, they're getting into the game and I will have to say it's a pretty fun game for them to get into. To, and this is a pretty interesting entry. So I'm gonna compare the shoes, I'm gonna talk about the uppers, the midsoles, the grip, talk about some of the other specs, and then if you stick around the end, I'll give you a little hint on which of these shoes I am gonna be lacing up for my 50K in a couple weeks from now. Let's dive in. I've been running in these shoes for a long time. I used to run in the Lone Peaks. They are a fantastic shoe. And I love them because I was an early believer, minimalist shoe phase where we were getting wider toe boxes so that your toes could splay a little bit more and you had that zero drop shoe, which means that you weren't in little mini high heels when you're running around everywhere. What I loved about Ultra was that they just took some of the great things from the minimalist shoe world and they added some cushion and some stack height to it to help you on those longer runs. And that's exactly what we got with Ultra for a long time. I've run in the Lone Peaks, I've run in the Temps, I've run in a few of their road editions. And so this year I was going to be, you know, really, really running in the Temp 5s a lot. But when I got the experience wilds only recently, it really raised an eyebrow, was really, really curious. So I'm really excited to dive in and tell you about my experiences in this four millimeter drop shoe, which is a first for Ultra. In terms of a use case, both of these guys are plus or minus 30 millimeters in the stack height. I'll get to more of that a little bit later, but very good mountain shoes. You wanna go out for a couple hours. You want that protection. You want that little bit extra cushioning. You want that grip. Both of these things are really gonna do it. They're really built. You can even see they both have their little like gator, like little Velcro snaps here and here. Both of those got in there. Getting into the uppers though, we can start to see some of the differences here. Now, I think both of these are technically a machine knit upper. I will say the Temp 5, the weave is a little bit more dense. It's almost a, a little stiffer. Like durability here is like, this is never gonna tear or open up. We've got these like rubber overlays here that you can kind of see. For the Experience Wild, it's still a durable upper. It's still a trail upper, but if I were to kind of call it anything more similar, it would almost be more of like a, like a road shoe or a daily trainer upper. The knit's a little softer. It's a little bit more forgiving. Both of these are the normal last for Ultra. They have a wide last now, a normal and a narrow to give you a little bit more options. All granted, they're that wider skewed by Ultra in general for that wider foot shaped fit. I did find the Experience Wild to be a little bit roomier and a little bit more accommodating. So I did like this, although this is a little bit more hardcore and a little bit more stiff as you go. The tongues, both pretty padded. I'd say the Experience Wild had a little bit more of a plush tongue. This guy's pretty thick. We're thick enough and protected, but just a touch thinner. I will say that the Experience Wild heel collar, again, had a little bit more padding and plushness around here. The Temp, still plenty of padding and not so much. And I'd say the other key difference between these two shoes for me, the Temp 5 upper, it just, around the heel collar, it felt a little stiff to me and it was kind of digging into one of my ankle bones. It would go away after like half a mile, I wouldn't notice it that much. I never got any rubbing, but this, I put these things on, no problem, right from the gun. So I was really, really happy happy with that upper. Now, going to the midsole. This is my really only bone to pick with midsoles for ultra in the general thing is that the ultra midsoles generally have been fine. I'd say fine in the respect of like they're stable, they're pretty durable, they have good foot protection, but they're not the most exciting foams out there. I found that the Ego and even the Ego Max, which is supposed to be, they're a little bit lighter, a little bit more responsive foam. Even in this shoe was just kind of so-so, it was kind of fine. So looking at the Ultra Experience Wild on the other hand, there isn't even a name to this foam. It's a lightweight molded compression midsole, but this foam felt a little bit more lively, a little bit softer and a little bit more responsive. And maybe you can tell by the change and inflection in my voice, I actually kind of liked this feeling in this ride a little bit more underfoot. It felt a little bit smoother. I'd say that the shoe in the midsole has a little bit more of a rocker shape than this one, which is a little bit more straightforward and to the point. A little bit smoother, a little bit softer and bouncier in that midsole, which I really liked. Getting to the grip of these shoes, 
as you can tell, they're pretty darn similar. Like, like literally the lug heights are more or less the same. This I've put a few more miles in recently so we can start to feel the wear. For the, the Experience Wild, it's got Ultra's Max Track outsole, which is kind of their more traditional Ultra outsole that we've seen out there. Good, luggy, grippy, no problems with this. I would say this is where the Tip 5 maybe wins again. It has a partnership with Vibram. Fun pink outsole in this one, but grippy, super durable, amazing. I'd say, you know, maybe this wins a little bit in terms of that grip and outsole thing, but I've still felt very confident doing this one as well, so not too bad. Let's talk about some of the other specs and the main differences of the shoes. The Tip 5 comes in at 9.8 ounces. It's a little bit lighter uh, than the, the Experience Wilds in the men's and 8.6 in the women. For the men's shoe for the Experience Wild, it's 10 ounces, so 9.8, 10. And for the women, this is 8.7, where for the women's version, this is 8.6. So again, very, very, very close. This has that four millimeter drop, which we've talked about. This has that zero drop. This being precisely 29 millimeters heel to 29 millimeters here. This guy, is gonna be 32 in the heel, 28 in the forefoot. And finally, we get to price. This is gonna be 155, this is 145. I'm not sure if $10 is that much meaningful when you're looking into investing in a pair like this, especially for those long mountain adventures. 10 bucks, neither here nor there in terms of getting you into the right shoe. I think there are some key differences with the shoe, which is why it's so important to get both on your feet. I was very surprised how much I liked the experience wild, and I was very surprised that I was leaning more and more trying a new relatively unknown first model for my 50k but I just have to do it guys because I felt so confident in the shoe right out of the gate I went 21 miles and I loved it I had no problem I put the Tim fives back on for another run still love this shoe but it just confirmed that this was the better fit for me for my run so there you have it that's what I'm gonna be running in a few weeks time for my 50k which is the gorge 50k in Oregon if you're out there give me a little high five or throw me a gel because I'm gonna need all the help I can get which of these shoes do you like any other questions drop those down in the comments below. Stick around on our channel because we've got a lot more shoe review comparisons. We got standalone reviews. And check out our other channels. Go to Instagram, go to TikTok because we post different content there than we do here. And it's really fun just to stay part of the conversation. And of course, go to your local Fleet Feet to try these shoes on. That's the best way to really fully understand. We'll get you fit, we'll get you set up, we'll get you in the right socks, we'll get you in the right insoles get you situated for your adventures as well. See you guys on the road or the trip. One, two, three, checking for content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You still here? I'm going running. Get out of here. I'll see you in the next video.